Alright, welcome to today's little bat rep. Um, this is going to be a little bit different uh, on accident. Normally I will, at, at the end of each player turn, I'll do a quick summary of what happened during the turn. Uh, for this particular game, uh, I got into it a little bit too quickly, and I forgot to do that. So what I ended up doing is I did turn battle round summary. So at the end of each battle round, so both players have gone, then I'll do a quick review. So this video will be shorter. It will not describe as much as the uh, previous epic uh, saber epic bat, bat reps, but at least you get to see some cool models in a real neat scenario. It's part of a campaign that's being run at our local game store. Uh, comes out of the uh, it's a story of the background. You know, Icarus Seven is the uh, planet we're fighting on or, or around, and it's built on the latest uh, chapter approved and. Uh, campaign book that uh, GW just put out. Uh, I honestly forget the name of the, the campaign book. I'll just put it here in the bottom of the screen so you guys will know what I'm talking about. But I hope you'll enjoy this. It's uh, real some cool models, uh, a nice mix of uh, units, four players, and a lot of fun it was had during that particular uh, game. Very uh, epic narrative. So thanks for sticking with me, enjoying this. Uh, share it, like, subscribe and enjoy the video. Thanks a lot. Alright, so there's the uh, Tau Strike Force designed to assassinate Von Bach. Alright, uh, we got my Shazo Irai, that's his name. He has, uh, he's using the hero rules. He has keen eyes so he can target characters. One of his missile pods, uh, the one on the shoulder, has plus one uh, damage, uh, has additional range, I believe it is. I gotta double check. Uh, he also has plus one armor, so it's two up armor. His he, special uh, ability is our uh, support system gives all his weapons AP minus one, or additional minus one. So his missile pods are AP minus two. We've got Cadre Fireblade for to trigger marker light support. Sorry. Three Pathfinder teams identically created with uh, two carbines and three uh, rail rifles. A broadside, rail rifles. A seeker missile and the uh, smart missile systems. Riptide with the heavy burst cannon and the uh, plasma rifles. Regular rail head with uh, smart missile systems. And over here, long strike smart missile systems. Over here we have Barracuda, standardly equipped with its seeker missiles and Tiger Shark AX 10 with its six secret missiles. That's the Titan Killer. <laughs> so there's a 100 point power point level list for this scheme. All right, cool. All right, so here is Von Bath and his Knights and Scion support. So Aaron, let's kind of walk through what you've got here. Okay, so we have a uh, super heavy detachment of Imperial Knights. Uh, they have the uh, Kestoris Imperialis. Uh, they are House Hawk Shroud. So leading them uh, is this is Lord Marcus von Bach. He's a Knight Castellan with uh, four hero traits. Um, so he's just got the one Siege Breaker missile and the two. Uh, uh, oh my gosh, I forgot what they're called. But yeah, he has those two things. <laughs> so the cannons. Uh, his four hero traits. Traits are uh, indomitable. He takes half damage. He has plus one toughness, and his plasma decimator is plus one strength and plus one uh, damage. So it's always overcharged. That's, that's good. Um, and we've got a knight errant, um, just WYSIWYG, So he's got the heavy stubber and uh, no carapace weapons. Oh, okay. Um, he, both of these have exalted court. So I spent three CP already to make them both a warlord. Okay. Oh. Character. Characters, right. So uh, his warlord trait is Duty of the Force War. So I will pick one of uh, your enemy units and he will reroll once okay. to hit them. Uh, this is a Knight Paladin. Stock standard, heavy stubbers everywhere. No relics. Uh, his 
Warlord trait from the Nightland or from Exalted Court is uh, blessed by the Sacristans, uh, so I chose his uh, battle cannon. Uh, any six, any unmodified sixes to hit with his battle cannon does one mortal wound. Oh wow, very good. And backing up the force, we have a battalion detachment of Tempesta Silence. Um, so leading the charge is two Tempesta Primes. Um, they are WYSIWYGs, so one has the command rod, one has just a la hot shot last pistol and his knife. And we've got three squads of Zyox. Um, we've got in the back two identical, or no, I'm sorry, in the front two identical squads with four plasma guns. And uh, sergeants are WYSIWYG, uh, since we're playing power level, so this is just what they're built with, so they're kind of weird. So we got a plasma pistol and a power sword. Okay. We've got a bolt pistol and a power fist. Uh, this back squad has four melta guns, and their sergeant has a plasma pistol and a power fist. Very good. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at the Grey Knights that are backing him up. Uh, so here's the Grey Knight force that's backing up Von Bath to hold the city center. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at what you got here. Uh, okay, so our, our hero character is the uh, Venerable Dreadnought. Oh, okay. Uh, Cassius, I figure, you know, it's pretty fluffy considering every chapter says the Dreadnought's the heroes. Yeah, you're right. The chapter, so let's roll with that. Cool. Uh, he's kind of vice leading with a brother captain. Okay. And let's see. Kind of, he's moving around here. Yeah, so brother captain, we got a uh, brotherhood uh, agent. Okay. A squad of Terminators. And those are Force Glaives? Uh, yeah, they're. And they a bring, Thunder uh, Hammer, right? That's a. Yeah, Nemesis Damon Hammer oh. on the Paragon, okay. and everybody else is packing Halberds. Oh, Halberds, okay. Yep. Uh, we got an Apothecary for oh. uh, wound maintenance and heavy mitigation. Good. Heavy support. Perkaton Squad armed with uh, oh. silencers and oh. a Damon Hammer to keep uh, somebody honest. <laughs> right? We've got some Razorbacks for some additional fire support because oh, right. they're kind of lacking in that long range punch. So, so, so they've got this is a, a last cannon and a double plasma, plasma. double plasma gun or cannon? Uh, I think it's a cannon. Okay, it's wow. It's a gun, a, plasma gun. It's a gun? Okay, I'll have to twenty four inch range. The, the yeah. on that one. Then a uh, twin last cannon. Twin last cannon with a storm bolter. Both of the storm bolters. Okay. Uh, we got. And what's up front? We uh, have? Front we got two strike squads. One packing standard swords, and uh, the other with halberds for. Uh, Heavy infantry and light infantry, respectfully. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, All right. The Nemesis Dread Knight is, is not a master. It's a stock one. We've got a Gatling silencer for long range, uh, mm -hmm. and the hammer and the incinerator for close to mid range. Right. Okay. And the Storm Raven. Storm Raven. Uh, packing uh, twin lads. Twin lads. Twin Melta. Okay. The Storm Eagle rockets under each wing, and the Hurricane oh, yeah. Bolters in the doors. All right. Very good. Uh, we'll see, I guess. All right. Okay. Let's take a look at the other half of the Tau Force. So here's a Tau Force that got bloodied the last time we tried to take out Von Bath. So let's see what we are taking this time to support the assassination of the knight. All right. So we have two basic Pathfinder squads. Uh, two with carbines, three with rail rifles. They've each got their recon drones. Uh, pulse accelerator and grab inhibitor drones. Okay. We've got three separate squads of crisis suits. They've all got their six shield drones, and then they're all equipped with uh, cyclonic ion blaster blasters. Okay, that's too painful. We've Thank got you. our two uh, heavy rail rifle broadsides with their missile drones. Okay. Yeah, those uh, are smart those are actually missile drones, even though they're actually the riptide shielded ones. They yep. don't actually have shields. <laughs> nope. Okay. Uh, Commander's got uh, his heavy burst rifle, or burst, yeah, cannon. burst cannon, and then two missile pods and two shield drones. Okay. Um, two squads of five man fire warriors with their tactical turrets and guardian drone, one fire blade. Okay. And over there we got our standard ghost kill with the cyclonic ion cannon. Excellent. And stealth drones and burst cannons, and all the suits pretty much have uh, the additional um, AP. Yeah, increase so, AP by one, yeah. Yep, yeah. and then the broadsides have the uh, ability to walk and fire, and so does the ghost kill. Oh, very good. Okay, yep, that'll help. So everybody's mobile and everybody's hitting. Okay, that's great. All right, so this is the 
the rest of the Tau Force. Let's go ahead and take a look at the All right, so Van Bath has taken the center of the city, holding with a detachment of Grey Knights, Razorbacks, and the uh, Venerable Dreadnought. So his HQs. This nine inch uh, circle represents the sole objective of this unit, this game, and that is whoever has the most power level within that at the end of the game wins. Uh, the other narrative objective, though, doesn't give you special points or anything, just for story, is to kill Von Bath. So, the Tau have arrayed their army to do just that. <laughs> Alright, so we've already advanced up the Pathfinder squads to get in position it's supposed to be. And we have, back here in this corner, the Ghost Keel has already placed his deployment <clears throat> to kind of come in from the side getting some benefit of cover just in case the opponent decides to attack. Everything is going to try to do as much damage to Von Bath first turn because that is a monster as far as uh, damage output. So we're going to be careful. Alright, so we're going to go on and start turn one and we'll see where this ends up. Alright, a bloody battle round this was. That's how advanced up. Flyers coming in. Unfortunately for us, Van Bath decided to go to ground, which uh, gave him plus one to all his saving throws against our shooting attack. So he had a two up invuln save because he uses uh, ion, rotating ion shield uh, stratagem. But he's only down to five command points, so that's that we help burn a lot of those off. So we only took two two damage off of him, while he went ahead and took out two drones off the uh, ghost keel from the Devastator squad here, who had to disembark from the lit <coughs> razor shark that was destroyed. This razor shark here was whittled down until he finally had one hull left. Fired his. Overcharged his plasma guns at the tiger shark, managed to roll a six and a one, blowing himself up or damaging himself, killing himself, no explosion, and putting some damage on the tiger shark. All right, so really not a whole lot of death and destruction this turn. However, there's a lot to come. We have all of their reserves are able to come in in this turn on a three plus if they decide. All right, on to turn two. All right, turn two was uh, very exciting. Almost all of the reserves for the Grey Knights and the Scions came in. First, the everything in the Tau army, uh, my Tau army, focused fire on the Knight Van Bath and took him down to 12 health. Mostly due with mortal wounds that I happened to roll on uh, rail rifles. The Riptide went to, uh, took a mortal wound to do his Nova Charge to get a 3-up invuln, and that dissuaded anyone from actually firing at him. I think that was probably worth it. Over here, the uh, responses was the Death Knight and the, or Dread Knight and the uh, uh, Nightwalker came on really close to the Pathfinders. Silencer Cannon took out the Pathfinder squad completely. We're basically illuminating any other targets for him. The Knight tried to charge the Pathfinders, but Overwatch from the Pathfinders, the uh, Commander, and the Riptide put three or f uh, five wounds on the Knight. So it was actually a very good Overwatch round for him. Smite from the two... Uh, Units here took two wounds off of the Barracuda, while the Castellan actually focused all of his fire on the Tiger Shark, leaving him with three wounds. The Volcano Cannon rolling one shot. Uh, Aaron decided to re-roll, so his command point to do that. Got, basically got three shots out of him. Three shots, 
Two hits. Both of them failed to wound, so no damage on that. One hit. All of the crisis suits came down and took out the apothecary and the venerable dreadnought and the devastators that were there, leaving the brother captain and the brotherhood ancient to charge into one of the crisis suit teams. Fire from the scions did minimal damage, uh, taking out only some drones. The knight failed to damage anything on the flyer and the side of the actual units and failed its charge into uh, crisis supply. Finally, the raven, uh, storm raven, came in in hover mode to try to focus fire on the uh, tiger shark. Unfortunately, was not able to do it. Dish out enough damage to drop it down. So we are now at the end of turn two, and there's still a lot of units left on the table. All right, on to turn three. All right, the end of turn three has been brutal. Dread Knight has came, come in and beat up the, the uh, railhead, hammerhead with the railgun, down to two wounds. Over here, the uh, Pathfinder's taken a beating, lost three guys to a incinerator, flamethrower from him, and failed morale check by one. Only the Shazui is left. Tiger Shark remains everything focused on the Castellan, who is gone. Van Bath is dead, taking a shot from the uh, macro cannons, real, heavy rail cannons, and did not explode. <laughs> Fortunately, with the arrival of all this death and destruction, we've got a lot of damage on the uh, stealth suits, or sorry, uh, crisis suits. A lot of drones are missing, and there's a lot of death and carnage coming our way. What can I say? So next week this squad of Scions failed the morale check and decided to flee the field, but they were backed up by a brand newly arrived uh, grab shooting unit. From a different battle, Gilliman has arrived as a reinforcement to back us up, or back up the uh, Imperial Guard. The Storm Raven was not able to take down the Tiger Shark. And we're left here with really a, this side of the battlefield is pretty clear of Grey Knights except for the, the Dread Knight. With the knights, the paladins that were here, all of them were basically taken down during Overwatch as they tried to charge the Tau line. So we are at the end of turn three. We're now going to start turn four, and we're going to start seeing a lot more focus on the center of the table as the knights try to boot out the Tau and put more power levels within the center of the table. All right, on to turn four. All right, the uh, turn four is bloody. We had the uh, rail the hammerheads back off and try to take out the dread knight. Or dread knight, he ended up being uh, shot by all the uh, uh, broadsides, marker lit by the pathfinders as well as the rail guns, the rail rifles, and was brought down to two wounds before he shunted away to get away from it all. Yeah. Crisis oh, suits were mauled by all the firing from here and the close combat of this knight. The other knight was taken down by uh, combined fire from all the uh, units in the back here. Gilliman charged forward and took out the Tantalus. And now we're about to go into turn five. By the way, this the Raven, Storm Raven is here, still chasing the Tiger Shark, was not able to deliver any wounds because I made two saves from the hits that, <laughs> that were delivered. All right, this is turn five, most likely the last turn of the game. All right, the death and destruction has ensued. Storm Raven was taken out by fire from the Tau, as well as some chaos that came on to support. We had the Death Knight was taken out by combined shooting from most of the Tau. The Scions here were destroyed, shot down, basically conceded. There's no way to get in and 
score enough victory points to take center. So, this has turned out to be a Zenos victory. The Tau holding the center of the table against the Imperial Might. All right. Okay. All right, so that's a scenario out of the Vigilus uh, new book. And it was actually pretty ex pretty exciting to play. Yeah, because I think they got All right, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.